stop, stop, stop. I can't take it anymore. Oh, I do the live ones too. Yes, I know. I saw your act in the theatre. You're really quite good. Quite a certain harmful habit. Stop it now, I need it. Hello and welcome back. We are breaking up with RBS. This is episode number 40 and I am Tani Santabria. And I am JDK Winnikin and we are here to debunk the junk. Uh, episode 40, does that mean we're over the hill now? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay though. Talk about a story. Right. It's okay. All of it. Yeah, right. it is yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. My 40s have been way better than than just about every, any other time in my life. So mm-hmm. if that's what over the hill is, then I'm speeding down to whatever's at the bottom, and I'm yelling the whole way down. Right. Kind of fun. And isn't that why we go up the hill in the first yeah, place? Yeah, to roller speed coaster. down it? Right. Yeah. Or ski down it or roller coaster down it. So. Or sled or something. Yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah. So maybe we've had it all wrong the whole time. <laughs> maybe instead of black balloons, it should be like on your 40th birthday, it should be like, welcome, you made it. Right. <laughs> it's now, all downhill you, from here. <laughs> well, in or a good you're way. in the slide. You're on the you're slide. The, you're on the slide you're now. On the slide. All that hard work, you're up at the top of the slide now. That's right. Is for the fun. Now for it. the fun. Yeah, or get to hang glide. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's all how we look at it. It is. It is. And yeah. the stories we tell ourselves. And the stories. And, you know, and as we talked about last week, you know, we, we really ended up spending a lot of time talking about the importance of taking care of our physical bodies in order to really kind of see the areas where <laughs> we're in denial and see, and you know, and to, to be able to work with the trickier parts, of our emotional states, you know, our relational states mm-hmm. with other people. And I thought that we ended up in a really good spot with that kind of something that I think we can, anybody who's listening can relate to and take a good look at. Am I getting enough sleep? Is my diet where I want it to be? Am I getting enough movement? And then beca- it's like setting the table for the meal, mm-hmm. you know, you can keep doing that. So, you know, so, and of course my experience with that is in b- taking better care of my body and recognizing it as an important part of my information gathering and regulating system not just my brain not only has that made more things possible but my as i've taken better care of myself my energy has been better and we use the sleep example i was always worried you know don't have enough time to sleep as much my productivity has gotten up even though i'm awake fewer hours isn't that amazing it is yes i love that it is, you know, it's, it's, and it seems like when I say it now, it seems like such an, you know, duh, obvious point. Well, yeah, I get better sleep, but it was, it was easy to do. It snuck up on me and it became a habit for years mm-hmm. for me to stay up too late and not get enough sleep. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> we've been conditioned to think that time management is the way in which we need to run our life mm-hmm. to get the most out of our life. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And time is a real thing. It is. Certainly. So, it is. Of and course. It, and it puts limits on things, right? You can't do everything you want. Totally. And, and, and having some management of time is probably important. Yeah. Yeah. But, but focusing on that or prioritizing that without really focusing and prioritizing energy management is only going to get us so far. Okay. I think we just found what we're going to talk about. Okay. So let's talk about energy management mm-hmm. as opposed to time management. Like you said, time management, you know, it is required in certain things. Like in our jobs, we have time management. We have deadlines. We have projects. We have to, you know, we have to do several things within a given day, maybe not just one thing. It matters. Spending time with our family, quality time, you know, spending time paying our bills, uh, whatever. Yeah, right? that th- those all happen in 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 a structure of time mm-hmm. right right and the time is external to us energy is not oh i like this right so as we try over and over and over again to fit ourselves into the hours of the day okay theoretically it makes sense that i should be able to do this for between eight and nine mm-hmm. do this between nine and ten do this mm-hmm. between, and we give no um, um, acknowledgement to our own natural energy levels mm-hmm. or the, the amount of time that we slept the night before. Right, right. right. And then what happens is when we do that, so we do this, right? We, we, we put ourselves a schedule and theoretically, 
conceptually, we think, yes, I should be able to do this. Yep. And then I'm going to be more effective and more productive. And then I'm going to meet, you know, success straight in the eyes. And that will help me feel better. Well, certainly, because we like to be successful. Right. And that'll right. give us meaning. That'll give us uh, comfort. That'll well, give us... maybe, maybe. But right. depending on something. what we're driving right. for. It could be something. Right. Yes, absolutely. So, so here we do this. And then we keep having a struggle with this. And we, we wonder, what's wrong with us? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with me that I can't do what everyone else is doing? <laughs> one number one. <laughs> That's yeah. the story. And everyone else is not doing what you think right. you should be doing. Right. <laughs> Comparing your internals to somebody else's externals. Never right. a good idea. Right. Yeah. Because if, if I'm going to do my revenge sleeping and stay up <laughs> until 1230 yeah. or 1 a.m., my 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock hour is probably not going to be as productive <laughs> in reality <laughs> As I thought, theoretically. <laughs> I find myself wanting to defend my older self. It's productive. <laughs> I'm just waking up. Right. Drinking coffee. I'm, I'm at least out of bed. Right? So mm-hmm. so w- when we set ourselves up for um, something that doesn't match with us. Yeah, particularly on an external like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Does, it just doesn't quite match. Okay. We're not using our strengths. We're not considering our own Mm-hmm. Natural energy levels, but then also, okay, when I notice I'm depleted, what in my toolkit do I have mm-hmm. to help, you know, refuel, yeah. to increase the energy level so that I may be able to move through this particular experience between the 1 p.m. and 2 p.m. hour of this particular day, Yeah, right? So that we're able to really look inward. Instead of having to be in our head around, okay, well, I said last week from 10 to 11, I'm going to do this thing. I need to do this thing. How come I'm not wanting to do this thing? And then we're in denial, and then we go look at judgment, judgment, and then we're criticizing, and then we're blaming, and then this the whole thing doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And our stress levels have gone up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because we're not, because we've tied ourselves exclusively first to the time piece mm-hmm. rather than understanding the energy piece can help inform how we y- deal with the external piece. Mm-hmm. This sounds like what you're saying. Yes. Is that a good way to look at yes. it? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think they do have to go, they have to work in partnership. They do. Right? And so just like you said about a, a label of like, I'm a night person or a night owl, I think you night said. Owl last night week. owl last week. Right? I'm a night owl. Like, okay, it is true that we naturally have different points in time that we have more energy mm-hmm. than others. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so certainly some people might have a little bit extra energy in the nighttime hours mm-hmm. than uh, other people. Oh, yeah. Right. So knowing also where our natural energy, depending on what project or depending on what experience we want to have mm-hmm. in moving through life. Mm-hmm. We probably want to give some of that some consideration. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly if we have things like, <clears throat> you know, for me, I do a lot of writing on the side in addition to all these other things that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I have learned that my best energy points for create the creativity of doing fiction and coming up with that is early in the morning, not right after I get up, maybe about an hour, mm-hmm. um, cup of coffee. So I get up a little earlier to do that. And then at night, Sometime after dinner, mm-hmm. I've got a good burst of energy for a couple of hours, a few hours before bedtime. And so when I was writing my novel, I sometimes could get two, two and a half hours a day between those two things. Start my day that way with some good energy, go about my work, do other things, come back to it later, finish where I left off, and then the next morning, go right back to it. Those energy levels for me, I've recognized those can be good points for me mm-hmm. to do them. They do not match up with other people that I know who are writers who it's it's all in the afternoon or it's, sure. yeah. you know, at mm-hmm. different times. Yeah, absolutely. I think yep. that's important. So when we work with our body yeah, instead of with some external, yeah, you know, that we're supposed to and the message or should yeah. do it this way, oh. you know, everybody work out in the morning. We should all work out in the morning. I work out in the afternoon. Yeah. I, I am a work out in the morning type of person because... After 6 p.m., <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happens to my energy. I can't find it anywhere. No, but no, <laughs> I don't do any computer work. I don't do anything that is going to um, 
be stimulating in that way Got it. after 6 p.m. Got it. And I've just been in this habit for a really long time. I mm-hmm. think, you know, part of it was around a sleep pattern yeah. for myself. And it just, I just know now that it doesn't work for me to plan to do something like that. Oh, yeah. After six. Oh, and I, I you know, <laughs> I know, I know when you're not going to answer any communication that I send. It's pretty much after <laughs> six o'clock at night. Sometimes, well, a text is different. Text is different. Okay. But like an email or, or have a conversation or, you yeah. know, do some planning. We don't do that. No. You know, we no. do our plannings <laughs> for this show and everything. We usually do that late morning. That seems to work yes. well for both of our energy levels. Mm-hmm. You know, you get up earlier than I do. I go to bed later than you do. But mm-hmm. that's a kind of an interesting meeting point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just kind of noticed that. We yeah. tend to do our, yeah. a lot of our collaborative work in the late morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So working with energy levels, right? Mm-hmm. And then if we've got something really important, again, that we want to experience and we're running out of energy, right? We want to know how to refuel and not just necessarily with coffee, at 3 p.m. because that's going to interrupt our sleep <laughs> or keep us from going to bed when yeah. we want, which is then going to put us on the cycle right. of depletion the next day. And it brings us right back to knowing what our bodies are about and what they need. We started that conversation last week. So it's like knowing what what to put into your body when. Caffeine is the most obvious one, mm-hmm. right? Is mm-hmm. You know, and I used to not worry about that. I mean, even sitting in here sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. recording, <laughs> you know, I'm like going. Mm-hmm. And that's not the best thing. But it can be other things too, right? You know, it's it's one of the reasons why certain certain foods may not sit with us late at night that that do okay earlier in the day. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And sometimes, you know, any kind of like light movement, yeah, will wake us up. Yeah, water could help mm-hmm. sort of uh, refuel. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we do need to have a snack. Yeah. Sometimes a conversation with somebody, yeah, could help us refuel. Yeah, I just saw a study the other day that that said reading the chapter of a book in the morning can really help you settle in emotionally and connect to your creative energy throughout the day for problem solving and um, doing some at night before you go to bed. Stuff that, that's entertaining, that stuff that you connect to, stuff that might mm-hmm. be helpful, can be really good for your health. Makes sense on mm-hmm. some level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. We ha- we're having an embodied experience. Yeah. 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 Not just locked in our headspace. So it sounds like, um, if we're going to think about this, that, that the challenge is if we tie ourselves to that external thing, that time is really the determiner. Mm-hmm. We're not even paying attention to necessarily the energy as much, or the energy becomes subservient to that. And what we're talking about is if we tap into the energy and learn all of that first, moving upward into that external time, we're going to understand it better, spend it more effectively, or a way that's more natural to us and not as depleting, not as stressful. And that's the only way to be present. Okay. If we are locked into time management, we don't have to be present for that at all. <laughs> it's true. Right. And we've been locked into time management. I mean, that's what I learned. Yeah. I mean, me too. So, and I'm over 40. Me too. So I'm We're like, on the slide. I'm like, yeah, but I think I'm a, I'm quite a bit ahead of you. But anyways, whatever. Yeah. That's another. It's it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm okay with. It. But I don't I don't remember ever learning something different. Yeah. Then manage your time. Yeah. Schedule your time. Stop wasting time. Yes. Stop wasting time. That that is a message be on that time. we get. Yeah. Be on time. You don't have time for that. Uh huh. We don't have time <laughs> for this. Yeah. It's uh well, and even too like in emotional states when. You know, or in a relational state where we're working through something with somebody and then somebody says, I don't have time for this. Mm-hmm. We don't have time for this. This isn't important. Wow. Right. Right. What if we re- started to replace the word time with energy? Ooh. Well, that would shake things up quite a bit. Wow. Okay. Let's play with that. Go ahead. Tell me, <laughs> tell me what you mean. So like, for example. Right. Like we don't have energy for this. I don't have energy for this. That's more truthful, maybe. Right. And, and is it? Maybe not. Right? We're not yet. We weren't ever looking. Oh, yeah. Right. Right? Because we've, we've tied ourselves to time, what yeah. I just said a minute ago. And time's external. We don't have control over time. Uh-huh. When we say, I don't have enough energy for this. Well, who's responsible for that? <laughs> <laughs> right? Right. Where did all your energy go? Right. Like, you're the energy manager of yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that changes the conversation 
completely. Yeah. And the responsibility to each other and to ourselves completely. It does. It does. And and when we recognize that, we can start recognizing it more in others. Mm-hmm. You know, and kind of, hmm, wow. You know, that, that, that person we all know who is jammed to the gills and yet will always say, oh, I just don't have time for that. Or, you know, can't give, I can't give to this. I don't. I can't. Rather than I won't. I'm choosing not to. It's a choice, right? Yeah. We, it becomes, I mean, and, and that's such a, it sounds subtle until you, until you really take a look at it and go, oh, no, that's actually a really clear difference. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's the idea of something happening to you. This is all being done to me, so I don't have time or I can't do this. Rather than, mm, I'm choosing all of this to keep myself busy or to do these things. So I'm choosing this and not this. Mm-hmm. Maybe the time for this conversation. Mm-hmm. Or I won't mm-hmm. do that mm-hmm. because I'm choosing these other things as more pressing mm-hmm. in the moment. Yeah. So instead of time controlling us, mm-hmm. right? And sometimes we say, I don't have time for this or, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it really isn't about time, but mm-hmm. we've used time as a yeah. scapegoat. Totally. For really, And so this changes that. When I say I don't have energy for this, mm-hmm. there's no scapegoat. Yeah. Right. We're right. we're in reality. Right. Or we're not. And then what does that mean? Right. If I'm saying I don't have energy for this, but I really do have energy for this. Like, but that's me then hearing myself. Yeah. Make a clear, make a choice. clear choice. <clears throat> right. So you can't blame it on something other than that. It kind of brings us back around to that accountability we were talking about, mm-hmm. you know, and that changes the equation of what you're going to see, you know, relationally, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's something that I, I've seen it before, you know, and, and I have, I know people who've been in relationships who hear these stories from people they're dating. Like, I, I don't have the time for this. You know, I don't have time to, and I've done this myself. I don't have time to give more. When I started saying, I won't give more than this, to whatever it might be, because I have these other things going on and I'm choosing, that's my responsibility. Somebody may not like it. Mm-hmm. But at least I'm being honest that this is my choice, mm-hmm. right? Because if I wanted it different, I could choose different. I could make more time for an activity or for another person or those types of things. But, but man, that's a different, that's a whole different set of conversations and realities and, and people don't, and people may not like it. And I think people aren't necessarily used to it. Dang, I mean, again, I don't know that. We, we've all been conditioned to focus on time. So I think if, if over time we mm-hmm. were able to come at reality and life from a real place, mm-hmm. right, and speak to our own responsibility for ourselves in the sense of working with our energy, mm-hmm. I, I actually think people would like that. It's more empowering, really. It is. I know I've come to prefer it being on the other end of that. I've, I've, I have friends who are very good at making that distinction clear. Like I don't, I, I'm choosing not to do this. I mean, I I would like to, I'm not going to, to have these types. I actually appreciate that more. Mm -hmm. It also challenges me to really ask myself, am I accepting that person for who they are, am I am I wanting something from them that I'm not expressing? You know, it it asks me. I ask myself better better questions about how I'm showing up and also what I'm wanting. Do I want to express a desire or something like that? I find it's just much much more honest. I've come to really appreciate it more because mm-hmm. uh, the rest just feels like I'm not getting the real story that I'm being mm-hmm. sold a bill of goods or something. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, any time that we're not, I think this goes back to. Tra- you transparent, right? Anytime we're not able to be transparent with each other mm-hmm. or not willing to be transparent with each other, mm-hmm. they, we're in denial, we're, there's scapegoats, there's confusion, there's disconnection, there's mm-hmm. protection, all of the things that make relationships and, and being with each other yeah. <laughs> much more challenging. Yeah, I got the image of the, of the, of the little kid having the tantrum, swinging the arms, mm-hmm. swinging around, trying to keep everything at bay. Mm-hmm. Except, you know, where the loss of control is, is right in the middle of themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, Yeah, that's a, that's a whole, 
We, we don't talk about it. that whole idea of replacing time with energy. Man. Yeah. It's quite a challenge. That would be something, wouldn't it? It would. It would. I wonder what that would do in terms of all of our conversations. It, it would, they'd be more honest. Mm-hmm. We'd have to take a look at ourselves because we'd be recognizing choice more than external. And we would have the experience of seeing other people more clearly. And you never know what that's going to do. <laughs> well, and I, I, I know that we often want to see what, what other people, how other people will manage through something. Or what is another person going to do? We, we love to get curious about other people. Sure. Right. I think the most important thing that comes from something like this would we would know ourselves more deeply. Yeah. If I have to say every time, instead of saying, gosh, I wish I had some time for that. Gosh, I don't have time for that. But Mm. if I had to say instead, "Mm, I wish I had more energy for that. Well, how do you get more energy? And why don't I? Yeah. Right. How would I do that? Like, oh. Oh, So it, 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 it could keep, it could allow us to be more curious and go inward more often instead of externally focused oh, we are so externally focused those are so much more constructive questions mm-hmm. and they're based in reality mm-hmm. and accountability and yeah. choice yeah. and decisions and how, who do i communicate and how about this wow mm. yeah yeah hmm okay always bring it back to ourselves i know so that's mm. the yeah that's the homework or the challenge if somebody wants to take that on really look at that use of time you know replacing that use of time or that word time with energy see what happens yeah like an experiment the experiment yeah it kind of changes the equation uh-huh. in some ways you know it's it's it is you know we this happens quite a bit on this show where a a term that we just use or a word or a a notion, a concept that we just accept as a given upon just a little bit of scrutiny Mm -hmm. shows its limits at best and at worst, its detriments. Mm -hmm. There's so many of them, those labels, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Or those, those phrases that we like to, to throw around and, you know, those things that we use to comfort ourselves or comfort each other. Um, When you take a look at them, sometimes they may not be all that helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah which brings me back around again asking yourself those questions first and then then suddenly the the landscape begins to change because things are looking different when you're asking those questions right like if you think about the more you know yourself like truly know yourself not all the bs stories about yourself right the more you know yourself mm-hmm. without the bs stories mm-hmm. the more you naturally will understand and know another person yeah because that's where we are connected. That's where we actually relate yeah. on a human level with each other in connection. Yeah. The BS stories just keep us disconnected and protected. We can't know another person mm-hmm. if we are stuck in or an expert on our own BS stories and we continue to believe them. Right. We're not going to know another person any better. Right. We're going to be really interested in another person because those BS stories have us comparing ourselves to other people, mm-hmm. right? So we're going to want to know what another person's <laughs> doing to make sure they're in line with it and low, right? <laughs> That's really true. And, you know, and, and when and in connection like that, if you know yourself better and you get to know somebody else better, things that are different may not matter as much, you know? No, no because the things that are the same are well known. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and those connection points can be really, mm-hmm. can really deep. And we're talking about any kind of relationship, right, with that. Yeah, that's, that's really true. Um, and in my own experience, it has helped me, as a result, um, be more curious, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. to be more open, accepting of other people's differences rather than wondering how they measure up to me. <laughs> you know? How well do they do things <laughs> like I do? <laughs> It's gotten me away from the the assumption that I've had, and I think many people have. You know, if ever more people believed like I did, acted like I yeah. did, we'd be better off. Mm-hmm. You know, it's gotten me away from that, and mm-hmm. it's it. And I've I've enjoyed the variety of all of that. 
so much more from that place. Yeah, there is a lot more variety. There is. There is. And a lot more that's interesting and a lot more things to think about that are possible and and um those those things those concepts can be so limiting or those terms that we think are just a given as true they may not be no the surface and devoid of meaning <laughs> yeah. right so that that's the problem yeah right. so when we get no we when we really know ourselves mm-hmm. things are more colorful and they're more meaningful Mm-hmm. And there's more variety mm-hmm. and there's more connection. Yep. But it has to start with ourselves first. Yeah. And, and as you get that, you want more of it. And you see the benefit of, again, going back to those basics of enough sleep, mm-hmm. enough food, you know, movement, connecting to our safety system, softening when we need to, breathing, getting into the belly, taking a, recognizing when something in the body is, is off or something feels different, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that. That changes the equation. It really does. Uh, and that's why, I mean, it's, it's, it really is like a fundamental set of building blocks, right? Go back to the body mm-hmm. and everything follows. We can't say that about the head. And that's, the diff- that's where energy management and time management are different. The head is all about time because it's all it needs to consider, right? The body, if we're going to be in... Energy in a, as in a state of being concerned about energy management, we have to get into the body. We have mm-hmm. to know the body. We have to take care of the body. Yeah. And then when we do that, we, we, get, we get the BS stories out of the flow of all that, and it, that flow is at least more honest. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think it's more engaging and more rewarding and more, mm-hmm. more everything. Yeah. More of what we want it to be. Absolutely. Life awesome. comes easier. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right. Energy versus time. Well, everybody test that out mm-hmm. uh, and see how that goes. I know I'm going to. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So thanks for thanks for that. That was a fun thing to talk about. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much uh, for all of you for joining us. If you joined us live, thanks for doing so. Um, if you've signed up for the podcast, thank you for that too. And thanks for uh, leaving us comments. Reach out to us either at our Facebook group, uh, Breaking Up With Our BS, or on or via email, Boobs the podcast at gmail.com. Uh, check out Tani's six week mastery course at integrated growth and mm-hmm. you can get involved in that and see how this works for you at your own pace. And we got more stuff coming eventually, don't we? We do always, always. All right. Mm-hmm. So we'll be back next week with even more things to talk about on this front. So until then I am JDK Winnikin and that is, I am Tani Santa Maria and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm. Thanks everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm in my groove. Here we go.